the truth needs to come out. The American people need to know. It's a pretty gruesome death. Yeah. You're abandoned 30 miles out in the desert, and yeah. there's nothing there for you to, to be rescued by. Human trafficking, that, that's certainly prevalent. Again, you pick a county, it is happening in that county. There's not no, no fencing, no barbed wire, no nothing. You just walk right through. We're all Americans. We need to work together. This is not the 31 counties issue. This is America's issue. Leon Wilmot, Yuma County Sheriff's Office. Mark Downs, Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Jim Pond, retired sheriff and executive director of Western State Sheriff's Association. Bill Boniak, Orange County Sheriff of Vermont, 1,400 miles north of here, and president of the National Sheriff. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good to have you with us on a special edition of the Shakedown on location in historic Tombstone, Arizona. I've been here today uh, trying to draw some attention, uh, some real attention to the situation down here on the border and and, and preparing for this and thinking about this um, and uh, looking at the fence today and, and looking at what's going on from my perspective from Alabama. Um, all I see is what's on the news, which on one hand you hear, well, there's these numbers of people. This is the number of people that are coming across. But then you hear someone uh, that represents the federal government on TV saying, no worries, our border is secure. Um, you know, we're fine. Everything's fine. And so, obviously, you, you know, two opposites can't both be true at the same time. So I appreciate y'all um, being willing to meet with us. And, and what I really want us to, to focus on is, is how does what is going on on the, on the border with Mexico, how does this impact not just Yuma County, not just Cochise County, not just the western states, but the nation at large? Because uh, I know we had uh, uh, at JailCon South in Huntsville, we had some questions about well, how does that impact, you know, we're in Huntsville, Alabama. How does that impact Huntsville, Alabama? But, you know, on the, my flight headed here, I had two news articles that come through my phone that are tied, because it's drug-related, tied to, uh, to what's going on here. So I guess to get started, uh, sure, if you could just kind of give us what is really going on, not the, you know, the version that we get piecemeal, but what is really going on in Yuma County that you're seeing on the border currently? Well, just to touch on your, your comments about what you're seeing on the, the media as far as what the administration is telling you, it's all false narrative as far as we're concerned as, as the boots on the ground that are having to deal with it. Yuma County, 90% uh, of your winter vegetables come from Yuma County throughout the whole United States. And it's impacting our farmers from that aspect of it because 290,000 people across my border this fiscal year but what they don't talk about is the 28,000 getaways. Mm. Um, out of that 290,000, 140 different countries. Right. And for us, that's a, that's a significant issue because they've already identified special interest countries related to terrorism that have also been embedded into these groups, and it's all controlled by the cartels. So the impacts for us in Yuma County is, is the criminal damage to the crops, the... Uh, the farmers aren't able to harvest that. We have to handle the, those cases of trespassing, criminal damage. They end up in our jails. We end up with the, uh, the deaths in the desert. I've had 50 since January that we've had to go out in the desert where the cartels have just abandoned these people. And from the humanitarian side of it, it's a pretty gruesome death. Yeah. You're abandoned 30 miles out in the desert and yeah. there's nothing there for you to, to be rescued by because there's no cell signal. You're out on a bombing range. So that's the impacts for us at, at the local level in Yuma County. As far as Arizona sheriffs, and you talk about the jail environment. So roughly every year, just for Yuma County, it's a $1.2 million hit in regards to illegal aliens that have been booked into our jail that have committed state crimes. Arizona and Texas have been identified through, through HIDA as the top two states where the hard narcotics are being smuggled into the U.S., and we heard today, and it, it's finally come out, that, well, even the senator believes this and stated that, well, most of your hard drugs are smuggled through the ports of entry. No, that's where a lot of it's getting caught. But right. when you add up <laughs> the amount of narcotics that is seized by law enforcement throughout the whole of the United States, that far surpasses any amounts of narcotics that the ports of entry are getting. And that's killing over 100,000 people a year. 
Yeah. And it's killing people in my community and every other community throughout the whole of the U.S. And we're supposed to get reimbursed by the feds for anybody that's in our jails that have committed a crime that's in this country illegally. We don't get but five cents on the dollar. So I track all the scat money to the state mm-hmm. criminal alien apprehension program dollars that every sheriff in Arizona puts in for. And we roughly eat $30 million a year out of our budgets as sheriffs right. just in Arizona because of the lack of this administration pursuing and going after these individuals from the federal side and holding them accountable with some sort of consequence delivery. So that, that, that's a small picture of right. the impacts in human trafficking. Okay. Thank you. Sheriff Daniels, you want to, I guess, pick up where he was talking about with Cochise. I know I spent a good bit of time with your jail commander today, giving us a tour of the, the board and explaining about all the things that your county specifically is doing to try to slow that down or at least feed some information to people who can do some things. So what are you seeing in Cochise County? Well, let me start off by saying the uh, my county, the southwest border, uh, and all 31 respective counties on the southwest border, this is not the 31 counties issue this is a marriage's issue and you got to look at it that way um, and you break that out so what's happened on our southwest border is an impact to america and sheriffs on national level local level state level uh associations all look at one thing public safety national security and humanitarian so i'll hit on that in the last 19 months uh we've had 5.2 million come across our border and that's a minimum number because that's the got away that we don't know about Sure. Uh, so 5.2 million, over a thousand migrants crossing the United States illegally died on U.S. soil. Over a thousand in 19 months. In my county, you put that back. That's what we deal with is gotaways. These are the ones that we see that are not give ups. These are the ones that call fight flight. Yeah. Uh, to give you an example, annually it's cost in my county for border related suspects that are under state statutes that have been booked in my county is costing between three and four million dollars a year, uh, just to caught just because of a border. And as Sheriff Wilmot just said, and I'll echo this, is these are policies that have failed. Right. This is leadership, and I call it intellectual avoidance because of their lack of engagement with sheriffs throughout the country, but also it's intended consequences. They know exactly what they're doing, and they're exploiting our southwest border. Call it political gain. Call it uh, illogical, unreasonable. The bottom line is not working. But go back to the policies. The policies need to be addressed. The 3,000 sheriffs and a uh, unified voice will continue to stand up for the rule of law, number, number one. Number two is our oath of office that says we will protect this country. And we're going to stand behind that. We're going to keep doing that on behalf of, like I said, state sheriff associations, our local communities that we're working with, uh, and we're trusted and elected for to protect them, but also a national level uh, with our sheriff president, our western state sheriffs. We all stand united to protect our communities, and we'll never give up hope. I say this, the day the sheriffs in this country give up hope, this country's in trouble. Absolutely. And uh, Mr. Pond, as, as the executive director of the Western Sheriff Association, getting a, I guess you say, more regional view of, of the matter at hand. I know as we were touring the, the, the border today, the thing that kept coming to mind is, it looks like the pieces are there to make it happen, to secure a border. But as you know, Sheriff Daniels just said, they're not permitted to do what needs to be done to seal it off. Where do you see this going if we don't, if we aren't able to seal that off and do what needs to be done? I already see it. It's already happened. Um, it, as you well know, I think right now um, the border counties stretch from Mexico to Canada, California to New York City. We're all border counties right now. We're all feeling that impact, as you will know, and, and Sheriff Daniels will, will agree as, as, as these uh, legal immigrants come across, they don't stay here in Cochise County. Right. Or, or uh, real, uh, you pick a county on the border, they don't stay there. They migrate or bust or move to the interior states, and that becomes an interior uh, sheriff's problem. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing that across the nation as well, and the impact uh, locally on any one sheriff. You pick it, you pick a county, any state, USA. We have the same problem that uh, the border sheriffs are experiencing right now. Uh, the, the, just keep, you know, keep in mind the opioid crisis as we've seen. You know, we've lost 100,000 people over 
just this last year, uh, the, the um, um, human trafficking that, that's certainly prevalent. Again, you pick a county, it is happening in that county. And uh, as it progresses, uh, we're working on that, that national security that we need. And again, what we found out today is, is um, you know, listening to uh, our partners is that, uh, um, you know, we got terrorists that are coming across that haven't been identified, even though the, we've had a number of arrests, CBP's been able to get a few. But the getaways, how many are involved in that getaway problem or, or, or uh, on that terrorist watch list or already in, in, embedded in the country and are planning a terrorist event in the United States? I mean, it's, it's a problem. We need to secure the border. It's a public safety problem nationwide. And we're experiencing that within the Western States region right now. Um, going back to the jail situation, every jail is seeing that that impact. Uh, Sheriff Wilmot's not the only one that's having an issue with budgetary problems. Just dealing with uh, the, the immigrant problem. Uh, their their uh, budgets are overworked, and uh, we're just, I'm seeing it throughout the region as, as I travel around. Uh, the sheriffs are struggling just to keep up with the impact that they're having on their jails. And if I could add on just for a second, just what we do in this interview, in the last two hours, we've had two pursuits. And right now, within three blocks, deputies are chasing the migrants right now and a smuggling driver within three blocks where we're at right now. I mean, and this is, again, in the middle of our county. This is, we're right. 20 miles, 30 miles from the border. So it just shows you the negative impact just in, the, in our county here. And this goes on all day long throughout the southwest border and beyond. And you think about it in broad daylight. Broad we're not talking about sneaking over somewhere in the middle of nowhere. You're in, the, in under the cover of night. We're talking about middle of the day, broad daylight. Well, you know, every bit of this is, is orchestrated and, and conducted by the cartels. They they control every mile of this international boundary. So they dictate what crosses and where and at what time. And that's why they have scouts that are positioned all along the border that watch for border patrol and law enforcement. So when they're not there, they can get that product through. And that's where, finally, we got to see the chief of Border Patrol under oath have to testify at the fact that every bit of what we're seeing in this border crisis is caused by the policies of this administration, either through Biden, Harris, Rice, or Mayorkas. Mm -hmm. And that's concerning to us when you have the Homeland Security, border security expert, chief in charge, actually admitting under oath finally that this is all caused by this administration's policies because there is no consequence delivery and without consequence delivery we end up having to pick up on the state side and right. end up having to, to to bear the fiscal responsibility of holding people accountable for breaking the law I mean, the poisoning of our neighbors our friends their kids and that's what it is this cartel is poisoning america with the amount of fentanyl that's coming across this border, it's just astronomical. And now they're making it look like Skittles and rainbows. Right. I mean, that, that just, kids are going to grab that. And for this administration to allow this continue, it, it's just, you know, for us in law enforcement, if we lie, we're put on a Brady list, and you pretty much you lie, you die. You've lost your, your ethics and, and your morals as far as being a cop in the United States. Anywhere. How is it that this administration is allowed to sit there and lie to the American people about the border being secure and people not walking across when they know they are and tell the people a bold-faced lie? Yeah. And that's what it is. They, they shouldn't be in office. When you lie, you die. I would also add on to that. For the political naysayers yeah. or, or those that just don't want to accept the fact <coughs> that the border and security issue, go look at the non-political stats. Historical highs from migrant deaths, mm. from drugs coming across the border. Arizona leads the nation in seizures. Uh, five million doses last year alone, leading it again in pills again this year. What I'm saying to you is those are facts that can't be debated. That's not an opinion, it's a fact. And you look at the record number, 5.2 in the last 19 months. These numbers we've never seen, and I mean historical numbers. So it's not working, but what also is not working, the engagement by this administration to fix it. And that I call it intellectual avoidance. 
is causing harm to every American. And, and people need to step up, unite, and let's get some leadership that's going to fix this. I mean, for us in law enforcement, I'll just throw this out there. For us to have to cross-deputize federal officers to be able to enforce the rule of law, why, why are we having as sheriffs to sit there and deputize our federal partners because the U.S. attorney won't charge an individual for smuggling narcotics mm. or assaulting an individual or assault one of their own agents? Local sheriffs are having to cross-deputize federal officers to be able to have a consequence delivery because this administration, their policies in the U.S. Attorney's Office are not supporting any of our federal officers. And that's a major problem. Well, gentlemen, I, I, the whole the whole point in, in doing this is, one, was to clear up, number one, what what is actually going on, rather than listen to this and that and the conflicting stories that we're getting. The second reason is after walking with and, and riding around and talking to you guys and seeing what's going on today, from a corrections officer's perspective, we rely on y'all to give us the tools that we need to be able to do our job effectively. But it sounds like, based on what you're saying, you need some folks to give you the tools that you need to be able to do your jobs effectively as well. And, and, if, and if, if you could send a message to corrections officers, to the American public at large, about the situation beyond what you've already said, what would it be that you would want them to get from our conversation this evening? You know, and for us, and I'm sure the, the rest of the sheriffs would agree, our corrections officers are unsung heroes. Nobody sees them day by day. But they are the ones that have to live and breathe in those environments each and every day. And they have to make sure that they're watching each and every one of the inmates that are in there. And a large part of them are individuals that have been arrested for narcotics that have been smuggled across the border. And it, they are the ones that are there. They're the backbone of the sheriff's offices, as far as I'm concerned. Deputies out on the street, they encounter a criminal, they put the habeas gravis on them, they book them into jail, and they're done. They go right to paperwork. But it's the detention officers and the correction officers out there in this country that are the ones that are having to monitor, make sure each and every individual is watched, the care, custody, and control. And that's one of the things that we always strive for, is making sure that they have all the tools and the medical capabilities to be able to address all these concerns. and. For, for us in Yuma County, uh, we try to get them every bit of the tools that they need. And the unfortunate part is that our budgets are impacted because of the lack of federal government yeah. reimbursing us for that. But we strive every day, and fortunately for some of us, our boards are there to support us and get those tools. Um, let Sheriff Downs talk about it, but he introduced legislation in Arizona this year about getting bonuses for our detention officers and deputies. And that's what we do to try to show our support to our troops, whether it's detention, administration, or patrol. It's all one big team, one big fight. Yeah. Let, let me echo the Sheriff Wilmont saying and add on to the fact that I applaud our correctional officers, our detention officers. Yeah. They are. They're unsung heroes. Mm -hmm. They go out every day to safeguard those that are placed in custody uh, by the courts, by law enforcement. But I also say they're instrumental to the hub of the criminal justice system. They're a, a vital hub within that spoke when it comes to the wheels be able to turn. So we thank them and I applaud them. We, our job in the criminal justice system, law enforcement, we couldn't do without them. So we thank them. Uh, their challenges are as great as ours, but we all need to stick collectively as a team and we're gonna get through this, we truly are. You know, the one thing I can add is, is that there still is hope as long as we do our job and do it right. And, and you can thank your American sheriffs for doing just that. We're doing what is right, and what is just. And as long as we continue to do that, our, our people, our employees will do their jobs, do it correctly, and will follow the rule of law and continue on with what our constituents expect us to do. And that's to preserve the peace. And uh, <clears throat> I think as we, uh, kind of proceeding along, and, and as you all know, the environment today, the law enforcement is under attack, if you will. So is the Office of Sheriff. I think that uh, the Office of Sheriff, which is the only one constitutional office, that we're elected, we represent the people, and we're accountable to the people, and they expect us to do our job and do it right. Well, gentlemen, I, 
I, I, I've got something because your question actually is a perfect tie-in for you. So I'm looking at a sheriff <laughs> that couldn't be further away from the border, That's so right. to speak, yeah. right? And the big thing that I hear from everybody is, this is an Arizona problem, or this is Texas you. You've heard you've heard all that is it's it's the Southwest problem, or it's a Western states problem. It's not your problem, or it's not your problem. You came out here. I'm sure you saw some things in the last few days that you're like, whoa. Yes. Can you talk about that? Of what has just blown your mind, and what do you wish the entire public should know that they don't know? What what they don't know is the truth. The truth of the matter is. The border is porous. We see a 30-foot wall. We see these gates that are made for for floods. And and when it's not in a flood zone, flood time, these gates are wide open. Wide open. You just walk right through. There's not no no fencing, no barbed wire, no nothing. You just walk right through. And actually, during our tour, we had a we had a uh, vehicle drive really fast by us, and. Uh, According to to my two fellow sheriffs here, who are quite experts on the border here, um, they usually slow down, blow the horn, and wait for them to run across and they jump in and take off. Um, they've been getting into a lot of pursuits down here, and uh, it's there's a lot going on, and you know it, the truth needs to come out. The American people need to know, and. You know, I'm 1,400 miles north of here, north northeast, and fentanyl is it's right there in Vermont. Fentanyl deaths are going on, um, and now you know, we see this rainbow of fentanyl. It's like, um, you know, it looks like Skittles. It looks like you know, something a little kid would take, see so it, pick it up, and, and start chewing on it. It's it's you know why are they doing this? You ask yourself. It's all about money. It's all about getting people hooked on these uh, opiates. And uh, unfortunately, when you um, none of this, none of these drugs are made in a, a pharmaceutical place where everything's measured exactly. Right. And uh, <clears throat> so they ended up. You're playing Russian roulette. You really are. Every time you take one of those fentanyl pills. Um, but that's. That's all over this country, you know, and some people have asked me, well, how do you know it's coming from the southern border? Well, we talked to our federal partners, our DEA agents, and, you know, they trace where this is coming from. But a lot of things you don't hear is how much crime is going on in these, our communities here, rape, in, whether it's Tombstone or Phoenix, uh, anywhere. And even north of here, um, Sheriffs that are eight, ten hours away, they're, they're feeling the effects of it, the crime, but also the victimization that no one's talking about. You know, how many how many women, children are being either molested, raped, even murdered? But I, what I don't think most of the Americans really realize is that the cartel influence is just not at the southern border. Mm-hmm. Our cartels are, are reaching every town in the USA. Um, whether it's through the fentanyl drug, or drug use, or the human trafficking, or what have you. The cartel's presence is there, and people need to understand that. And, and we've got to, as public servants, if you will, just do our jobs, do it right, and you know, continue on. I think we need to put Congress on, on notice that it, it's their problem. It really is. It's Congress. Those people need to act, and um, we'll do our best to uh, uh, push, I guess, if you will, our Congress people to, to do what's right for the American people. And they certainly have neglected that over the decades. None of us, none of the sheriffs are anti-immigrant. We want the immigrants Agreed. to just go through the proper channel, go through the port of entry. If they're being a, vic- you know, being a victim, go through the port of entry and you know, do it the right way. But when we have, as you heard, you know, we're having people that we, they're unknowns. Right. 140 different countries. It's, uh, and when you hear not just hundreds, thousands, but, you know, millions of people that are coming across, this is a, it, it's our homeland. This is uh, our country. We've got to protect it. We've got to stop, uh, 
criminal criminal outlet. So, and I'd encourage everybody watching this and the viewers, the public out there, know your sheriff in your community, know your county sheriff. Three thousand of us serving the United States. Go meet your sheriff. If you haven't met him, go personally meet your sheriff. Get to know your sheriff. Get to know your police chief, your law enforcement officers, your deputies, your correction officers, detention officers. We're transparent officers. We we want to know who we work for, and you should know who you um, who's serving you, your sheriff, and your law enforcement. So collectively, we need to unite as a country, and it starts in our communities. It doesn't start in Washington D.C. It starts in every community of the United States. I challenge you and encourage you to do that. And I, I think what you'll find is the fact that uh, the, the false narrative that's out there on defunding police and reforming police, that's a narrative that the uh, the politicians have come up with. And the first thing that every one of us has always said is you got to keep politics out of public safety. Right. I get it. If you don't like the law, then you need to change the law. But until then, you need to enforce the rule of law. And that's what sheriffs are all about. <coughs> we're, we're the voice of the people. We're elected by the people. And believe it or not, when something happens in Washington, D.C., and they don't like it, the first person's throat that they grab is their local sheriff. <laughs> but and we're, the, we're their voice, though. And it's unfortunate that the, the politicians back in Washington, D.C., forget why they were voted into the office. They weren't voted in there to represent special interest groups, and that's where we're having the problem. They're there to represent the people, and if there's anybody that's engaged with the community, it's the sheriff. So if anybody right now needed to be reformed and defunded, it's probably Congress. <laughs> I would support that. We, you, 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 wonder why, you wonder why sometimes some of the sheriffs are really outspoken. And you're saying, well, gee, what's going on? But they're frustrated. They're, they're at their wit's end. They see, they see what's going on. They're trying to do the right thing. And it's like you're hitting your head against a brick wall. And, you know, we... You know, we need the cooperation from our administration. You know, we, we're all Americans. We need to work together. You said a lot of things, cartel. Most of the public, I think, out there, if you use that word cartel, they picture some Nicaraguan, you know, something out there that, not in America, not here, not in our backyard. Mm -hmm. But it is in our it backyard. Is. It is. And, and I've said this a thousand times, and I, I think what I'm hearing you say is even stronger. If you have a drug problem, there's a cartel, right? Yep. Um, if you have gangs, there's a cartel. That is, a, that is part of that it's, whole conglomerate. It's the same MS thing. MS-13 is, is, right. is a big part of the, That's the exactly cartel right. operation. So, and, yeah. and there's two types that, it, that we saw today coming over the wall. Um, well, two types of, of uh, undocumented, if you want to call it. You have the, the the folks that get on the bus where you're at, the give you know, ups, yeah. right? The give ups, mm -hmm. but then you have the ones that that are very nefarious, trying to figure out any way to get over here to do something that is very bad. They got to leave. They can't give up. They can't give up. So between all of that, though, what again I think most folks don't know is who's running both of those operations? The cartel. 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 And the, cartels are they're all about three things: violence, fear, and greed which all eight goes evil. And I'm, there's nothing good to be said about the cartels. And are they in every one of our communities? In yours? Yes. Yours? Yes. Yours? Yeah. And you look, you just look at the amount of violence that's going on across the border from us. And we yep. see it actually come into the United yep. States because yep. of the cartels are buying for control. You look at the 290,000 I told you that crossed our border on, in Yuma County. So you think about it, cartel is charging at least a minimum of $6,000 per person to cross where they dictate where they cross. If you're from another foreign country, it goes up to 15000 per person. The cartels have control of everything, and that's why there's so much violence going on in the border communities over in Mexico. And our Mexican counterparts don't want this in their neighborhoods any more than we do. And they're fighting this same battle over there, but... There's such a high concentration of cartel control that their law enforcement is hamstrung because they've been allowed by that government to allow this to happen. So now we have to deal with the repercussions of that. Well, I think you need tech attitude too on this. The yeah. cartels have to add to a will. They have the will mm -hmm. to produce their business, to produce the drugs coming across, smuggle, traffic people, which is modern day slavery, let's call it what it is. 
then you look at our administration that over the last 19 months has chosen not to have that will. So you can see where the game is being fought and who's being and who's winning. And right now the cartels. And, and it goes all across the country. I will tell you, we just recovered uh, Ecuadorian that was abandoned out in the desert, died by the smuggler. The family and their friends from Milwaukee are the ones that funded for three people to come across twenty-one thousand dollars. They took out a loan on their house to pay the cartels to be able to smuggle in their family members to get to Milwaukee. And now I am having to pick up those pieces, and we're having to investigate that crime because the federal government's not interested because of policies. So the victimization goes on, and if you cannot afford to pay to cross, then you're looking at indentured servitude to be able to reimburse the cartels. And this goes on, we've had it before, and we've explained all this to Mayorkas when he first looked at changing all the policies along the border. So you're gonna end up with the deaths in the desert, you're gonna have the victimization of the, the women and the children, you're gonna have the cartels exploiting everybody for whatever servitude that they can get out of them, whether it's doing yard work for the males or prostitution on the other end. No matter where you go, they track you, and you will pay the cartel back, or they will come find you. And that's what we have to deal with on the U.S. side. But our politicians in Washington, D.C. don't want to hear that. But we're the ones that are out there fighting that fire. Last question, and this hopefully will put a punctuation on some of the things. I'm just... I'm thinking of questions that we can tie in here that would, would be really good, but um, we know no solution out there is going to be foolproof, 100%. I mean, we don't have the fun, and we talked about you, you need a physical, you know, uh, uh, rest restricted area. You, you got to put the fence up, right? You also have to have staff and the technology, to, all three of those prongs to make it work. You're never going to have it all. How would that affect the drug problem in America, in your opinion? First problem, actually, we just were discussing this earlier, it's the policies. That's the first thing we really need to fix. Mm -hmm. Our, our legislators up in, in Washington, we need to get these policies changed. That's where we need to start. We could arrest all the people we keep arresting, and we're going to keep let them, letting them go. So we need to start with the policies first, and then the funding you know, for the, for the enforcement part of it. That's, that's as a, an outsider here, that's what I'm seeing. It's the policies that really need to change. And I do want, I know you're gonna have some more um, sheriffs want to answer, but I wanna say this. I wanna thank you for what you're doing. And what we need to do is keep, we need to get the media, uh, because the media, they control the message. The, the message, message that's going out there. We need to get the truth to the, to the major media outlets and saying, hey, this is what's really going on. And come down, you know, yeah. spend some time with the sheriffs. You know, I'm here less than 24 hours in, in Arizona. And it was an eye opener yesterday, you know, with the border. And then I did a ride along today and it's, you know, uh, when you have two or three deputies covering uh, <laughs> many, many square miles. Square miles. It's a, uh, it's it's a, it's very porous. If you want to get into the country, you're going to do it. So, everything along the border, as far as securing the borders, has got to be addressed geographically, and locals have to be part of that solution process mm -hmm. in there. To give you an example, our border patrol agents are hurt with that many people coming across. So through overtime grants that we were able to get, our detention officers are actually out there driving Border Patrol vans, helping transport from the field to their office to free up Border Patrol agents. So working at the local level, we're able to develop solutions even though we're dealing with policies that are complete failure. But you've got deputies, detention officers, local law enforcement that are out there each and every day working hand in hand with our federal partners to address these issues on the and, local level. And if I could add on to what the sheriff is saying is, besides policies, which we all know is not working, let's, just, let's be real, they're not working. The, no, the stats show that, these are not played with stats. We gotta have a change in messaging. We gotta do a paradigm shift. The message starts with the President of the United States and the Vice President and Secretary Mayorkas that 
we will have a secure border. There will be consequences for those that break the border. And it's got to be shown through action. And last but not least is, let's get the dang politics out of this. Politics has no Agreed. business in the public safety. We've all agreed on that. Sheriffs throughout the country, they call us political, but I'll tell you right now, sheriffs <laughs> are there for public safety, sustain the quality of life within our respective communities. And they see what's going on with the political ideology being played through the backs of uh, police in this country is failing. We can't let that happen. You know, you, you, you even rural Vermont, very rural, our local McDonald's, and I see a lot of uh, people my age working grand, grandmas, grandpa, grandmothers. And, but what, something I learned recently, all the grandmothers that work in this local McDonald's, they have custody of their kids, grandkids. And you say, why? It's because of the drugs. You know, we need to wake America up on the spending. We really do. The soccer moms that are out there, you know, they're, they're busy taking the kids to, to school, to, to sports activities and everything. But at some point, um, they're going to run into somebody who's going to be selling fentanyl, these pills, for, hey, try it for 50 cents. You know, um, unfortunately, uh, people die. And, you know, they're not coming back. And as you can hear, a little background noise. We've got a border patrol helicopter, certainly, because as the sheriff said earlier, we have a. Yes. Our reality doesn't want to be heard or felt in, in counties. Well, look at Mayor Bowser out of Washington, D.C. Look at Mayor Adams out of New York, former law enforcement officers. Shame on you. That our reality in the border is not going to be your reality. The second, instead of blaming us and our governors and our respective states down here, and sheriffs and everybody that's trying to do the do the good fight down here, do the good thing here, um, fill their oath of office, instead you criticize us. Why don't you call out where it starts? U.S. Congress and this administration, this president, uh, and take it their step. Why don't we all come together and fix the problem instead of criticizing ourselves? They've almost put the entire weight of the drug problem of America and crime and gangs, cartels, whatever word you want to use, on your backs. And that's not right. Because, yes, it's 1,900 miles. But is that really your problem to own or is it America's problem? It's America's America's problem. problem. Everybody will agree with that unless you're looking for a vote. Stop worrying about being reelected and just do your job. Exactly. We are American sheriffs. That's right. Thank you, sir. Thank you.